from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with coverage of the global .next digital experience, brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, and welcome back. We're wrapping up our coverage of the Nutanix .next global digital experience. I'm Stu Miniman, and I'm happy to welcome to the program, help us, as I said, wrap things up. We're going to be talking about running better, running faster, and running anywhere, a theme that we've heard uh, in the keynotes and, and throughout uh, the, the, the two day event of the show. Uh, we have three VPs uh, to, to help go through all the pieces. Coming up on the screen, first of all, we have Greg Smith, who's the Vice President of Product and Technical Marketing. Right next to him is Madhukar Kumar, who is the Vice President of Product and Solutions Marketing. And on the far end, the Senior Vice President, Thomas Cornelly. He is the Senior Vice President, as I said, for Product Portfolio Management. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here, Stu. Thank Stu. you for having us. Good to be here, Stu. All right, so, so dot .next to show, we really enjoy, of course, this the global event, so not just the US and the European and Asia, but we really get to see across the globe and a, a lot going on. Uh, I've had the pleasure of watching uh, Nutanix since the early days, been, been to most of the events, um, and the, the portfolio is quite a bit bigger than just the original uh, you know, HCI solution. Thomas, since you know, portfolio management is, is, is under your purview, uh, before we get into summarizing all of the new pieces and the expansion into cloud and software and everything, just give us, if you could, that, that overview uh, of the portfolio uh, as it's coming into the show. Yeah, no, absolutely, Stu. I mean, as you said, you know, this is, uh, we've been doing this now for 10 plus years and we've grown the portfolio. We've added a lot of products over the years. And so what we rolled out uh, at this conference is a new way Right, to talk about what we do at Nutanix and what we deliver in terms of set of offerings. And we talk about the four Ds. You know, we start with our digital hyperconverged infrastructure, right, which is the core ACI stack that you can run on you know, any server. And that stack, this supports our data center services, which combines our storage solutions, our business continuity and disaster recovery solutions, and security solutions, our DevOps, services, which is our database automation services, our application delivery automation services, and now our new you know, carbon and Kubernetes platform and service offerings. And then our desktop services, right, which is our core VDI offering and our frame desktop as a service offering. So put all this together, this is what we talk about the 4Ds, which is our Nutanix cloud platform that you can run on premises and now on any cloud. Well, th thank you, Thomas, for, for laying the groundwork for us. Uh, Greg, we're, we're, we're going to come to you first, that, that run better sure. theme. Uh, as Thomas said, and, and as we know, you know, HCI is at the core. Uh, a lot of discussions this year, of course, uh, the, 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 the ripple effect of uh, the global pandemic uh, has more people working remotely. Uh, that, that's been a tailwind for, for many of the core offerings. Uh, but help us understand, you know, how's that building out? Uh, some of the new things uh, that, that we should look at in, in, in the HCI space. Yeah, thanks Stu. I mean, for Nutanix and our customers, a lot of it begins with HCI, right? And what we've seen uh, in the past year is you know, really aggressive adoption for HCI, particularly in core data center and private cloud operations. And you know, customers are, are moving to HCI, you know, not only for greater simplicity, but to get faster provisioning uh, and scaling. And I think from a workload perspective, we see two things. That HCI is being call, called upon to deliver even more demanding apps. You know, those with like really very low latency, such as large scale database uh, deployments. And we also see that uh, HCI is expected to, to improve the economics of IT in the data center, and specifically by increasing workload density. So we have a, a long history, a story of history, of continually improving HCI performance. Uh, in fact, every significant software release, we've optimized the core data path. And we've done it again. We've done it again with our latest HCI software release that we announced uh, just this week at .next. Um, the first enhancement we made was um, uh, in 5.18 was to reduce the CPU overhead and latency for accessing storage devices, such as SSD and NVMe. And we've done this by managing storage space on physical devices in the HCI software. So rather than rely on slow or in-kernel file systems. And this new technology is called Block Store. 
And uh, our customers can take advantage of Block Store simply by upgrading to the new software released. And we're seeing immediate performance gains of you know, 20 to 25% uh, for IOPS and latency. And then we've built on top of that, we've added uh, software support for Intel Optane. Uh, by leveraging user space li library, specifically SPDK or Storage Performance Development Kit. And SPDK allows um, Nutanix to access devices from user space and avoid um, expensive interrupts and systems calls. So with this support along with Block Store, you know, we're seeing application performance gains of up to 66% um, or more. So we're just building on a legacy of pushing performance and software. And that's the real benefit of uh, moving to HCI. And just to just to add to that, so when it comes to run better, I think uh, one of the things that we think of running better is automation and operation. And when it comes to automation and operation, there are a couple of uh, very, I would say, significant uh, announcements that we also did, Stu. One is around Calm as a service. Calm is one of those products that our customers absolutely love. And now with Calm as a service, you have a SaaS plane, so you could just, without installing anything or configuring anything, you could just take advantage of it. And the other thing we also announced is something called Nutanix Central, and Nutanix Central gives you the way to manage all your applications on Nutanix across all of your different clusters and infrastructure from a single place as well. So two, two big parts of uh, Run Better as well. Well, th that's great. And that really, you know, is that foundational layer. Uh, Mudakar, we, we talk about uh, expanding out, uh, running faster. Uh, the, the other piece we, we've talked about for a few years is step one is you modernize the platform. And then step two is really you have to modernize your application. So, so maybe, you know, help us understand that, you know, that changing workload, you know, cloud native is, uh, you know, that discussion that we've been having for yeah. a few years now. Um, you know, what, what are you hearing from your customers and what new pieces do you have uh, to expand and enable uh, that, that piece of the overall stack? Yeah, so I think uh, what you mentioned, which is around cloud native, uh, the big piece over there is around Kubernetes. And we already had uh, Carbon. So with Carbon, a lot of the things of complexities around, uh, you know, managing Kubernetes is already taken care of. But there are higher level aspects on it, like uh, you have to, have observability, you have to have log, you have to have uh, manage the ingress outgress, which has, which has a lot of complexity involved. With. So if you're really just looking for building out applications, what we found is that a lot of our customers are looking for a way to be able to manage that on their own. So what we announced, which is Carbon Platform Service, enables you to do exactly that. So if you're really just really concerned about creating cloud native applications, without really worrying too much about how do I configure the Kubernetes uh, clusters, how do I manage Istio, how do I manage all of that, Carbon Platform Services actually encapsulates all of that through a SaaS plane, so you can go in and create your cloud native application as quickly and as fast as possible. But just in the typical Nutanix style, we wanted to give that uh, freedom of choice to our customers as well. So, if you do end up utilizing this, what you can also choose is the endpoint where you want these applications to run. And you could choose any of the public clouds or the hyperscalers, or you could use a Nutanix or an IoT as an endpoint as well. So that was one of the big announcements we made. Great, Greg, Greg Matakar, before we go on, uh, it, it's one of the things that I think is a, a thread throughout, but maybe doesn't get highlighted as much, but uh, security. Uh, of course, is you know been front and center for a while, but here in 2020 uh, is even more emphasized. Uh, you know, uh, you know things like ransomware. Uh, 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 of course, uh, you know even more so today uh, than, than it has been for a couple of years. So, so maybe you could it just address uh, you know where we are with security and any new pieces uh, along there that we should uh, understand. Yeah, I, I can start with that if I could. So we've long had um, security in our platform, specifically micro segmentation, you know, firewalling individual workloads uh, to provide you know least privilege access. Um, and what we've announced this week at .next is we've extended that capability. Uh, specifically, we've leveraged some of the uh, capabilities in Zybeam, and this is our SaaS-based uh, service to really build a single dashboard for security operators. So with Security Central, again, a cloud-based SaaS app, uh, 
Nutanix customers can get a single pane from which they can monitor the entire security posture of their infrastructure and applications. It gives you asset reporting, asset inventory reporting. You can get uh, automated compliance checks for HIPAA, for PCI, and others. So we've made um, uh, security really easy uh, in keeping with the Nutanix theme, and it's a it's a, security centrals are a great tool for that security operations team. So it's a big step for uh, Nutanix and security. Yeah, and just one, just to... actually on, on this one, one big piece of Security Central is, is to make it easier, right, to see your various network flows and leverage you know the flow micro segmentation services and yeah. configure them on your different virtual machines, right. So it's a it's really a key enabler here to kind of get a sense of what's going on in your environment and best configure and best protect and secure infrastructure. Thomas is exactly right. And in fact, you know, one of the things I wanted to chime in too, and maybe Greg, you can speak a little bit more about it. One of my favorite announcements that we heard, or at least I heard, was the virtualized networking. And you know, coming from a cloud native world, I think that's a big deal. The ability to go create your virtual private cloud or VPCs and subnets and then be able to do it across multiple clouds. That, that's, that's something I think uh, has been a long time coming. So I was personally very, very pleased to hear that as well. Greg, do you want to add a little bit more to that? Yeah, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. When we talk about micro segmentation, that's one form of isolation. But what we've announced is virtual networking. So we've really adopted some cloud principles, specifically virtual private clouds, constructs that we can now bring into private cloud data centers. So this gives our customers the ability to define and deploy virtual networks or overlays that sort of you know, sit on top of broadcast domains and VLANs. And it provides isolation uh, for different environments. So a number of great use cases. Uh, we see HCI specifically being relied upon for fast prov provisioning in new environments. But to date, the network has always been sort of an impediment to that. We're sort of stuck with physical network plants, switches and routers. So what virtual networking allows us to do is through APIs is to create an isolated network, a virtual private cloud, uh, on a self-service basis. This is great for organizations that are increasingly operating as service providers, uh, and they need that tenant level segmentation. Uh, it's, also, it's also good for uh, developers who uh, need an isolated workspace and they want to spin it up quickly. So, so we see a lot of great use cases for virtual networks, and it just sort of adds to our full stack. So we've software-defined compute, we've software-defined storage. Now we're completing that with software-defining networking. Right, and, and I ha if I have it right in my notes, uh, the, the virtual networking, that, that's in preview today, correct? Yes, yeah, we announced it this week, uh, and we are uh, announcing upcame and availability. So we are, uh, uh, and we have a number of customers who are already working with us to help define it and ready to put it into uh, their environments. But virtual private networking is upcoming from Nutanix. Yeah, so I, I, I absolutely, you know, I've got a motor car, I've got a, a special place in my heart for the networking piece, that's where a lot of my background is. But there was a different announcement that got a little bit more of my attention, and Thomas, we're gonna turn to you to talk a little bit more about clusters. Um, I, I got to speak with Monica uh, and Tarkin, uh, 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 head of the conference, uh, when you had the announcement with AWS uh, for releasing Nutanix clusters. Uh, and you know this is something we've been watching for a bit. When you talk about the, the multi-cloud messaging and how you're taking the Nutanix software uh, and extending it uh, e even further, uh, that run anywhere that you talk about uh, in the conference. So Thomas, if you could just walk us through uh, the announcements. As I said, something we've been excited, uh, been watching this closely for the last couple of years with Nutanix and great to see some of the pieces uh, really starting to accelerate. No, absolutely. And as you said, right, this is something that's been core to the strategy, right, in terms of getting and enabling customers to go and do more with hybrid cloud and multi cloud. Um, and if you go back, you know, a few weeks when we announced clusters on AWS, this was, you know, a few weeks back now, we talked of, look, HCI is a prerequisite, right, to getting the most of your hybrid cloud infrastructure, which is the new HCI in our mind. Um, and what we covered at dot .next was these great announcements with Microsoft Azure. Right, and just leveraging now their technologies, bringing some of their control pane onto our cloud platform, but also now having clusters on Azure and announcing that we'll be delivering this in a few months. And having customers now to go and take the same Nutanix cloud platform 
the same consistent set of operations and technology services from data center services, DevOps services, and desktop services, and deploying those anywhere on premises, on AWS, or on Microsoft Azure. And again, for us, right, cloud is not a destination. This is not a now we just accomplished something. This is it's a new way of you know operating, right? And so it's touching, uh, giving customers options in terms of where they want to go deploy. So we keep on adding new clouds as we go. But also, it's a different way of consuming infrastructure, right? From a from an economics perspective, you probably know, you know, Nutanix has been very aggressive in terms of moving to a subscription based offering on all of our solutions and our entire portfolio. And as we go and enable these clusters offering, we're now making consumptions more granular, right? Allowing customers to go now consume our software on an hourly basis or a monthly basis. So again, this is kind of that next step of cloud is not just technology; it's not a destination; it's a new way of operating and consuming technology. Yeah, and when I, when I think about the flexibility that this brings to existing Nutanix customers, um, it gives them enormous choices in terms of new in, in new infrastructure and where they set up new clusters. So think about a uh, Nutanix uh, customer today. They may have data centers throughout the US or in Europe and in Asia Pacific, um, but now they have a choice. Rather than, rather than employ their next Nutanix environment, uh, an existing data center or colo, they can put it into AWS and they can manage exactly the same. So for us, it just provides near infinite choice for our customers of how they deploy HCI in our full software stack, in addition to the consumption uh, that Thomas talked about, consumption choices. Yeah, just to add to that, again, I should have said this is also one of my favorite announcements as well. But we yesterday, we uh, Greg, myself, Thomas, we were talking to some industry analysts and they were talking about, hey, you know how there is a need for pods where you have compute, you have network and you have storage all together. And now people want to run it across multiple different destination, but they have to have the freedom of choice. Uh, today, using one different kind of a hardware, tomorrow you want to use something else, there should be portability for that. So with clusters, I think what we have been able to do is to take that concept and apply it across public cloud. So the same, you know, whether you want to call it a pod or whatever, but compute, storage, networking, now you have the freedom of choice of choosing a public cloud as an endpoint where you want to run it. So absolutely one of those, uh, I would say, game-changing uh, announcements that we have made more recently. Yeah, well, to, what, what, to close that loop, actually, and talking about portability, right, there's enabling portability of, of applications, right? But also, one thing that's really unique in terms of how we're delivering this to customers is portability of licenses, right? The fact that you have a subscription term license for on-premises, you can very easily now reapply that license if you decide to move a workload and move a cluster from on-premises to your cloud of choice, whether that's AWS or Azure, that license is also portable. But so again, full flexibility for those customers, right? Freedom of choice uh, from a technology perspective, but also a business perspective. Uh, one of the things I think that really brings home, uh, you know, how real this solution is, it's not just about location. Uh, Thomas, as you said, it's not about a destination, uh, but it's about what you can do with those workloads. So, you know, one of the use cases I saw uh, d during the conference was talking about, uh, you know, a, a, a very long partner of uh, Nutanix Citrix. Um, and how you know that plays out in this clusters type of environment. So maybe if you could just illustrate that as you know one of those proof points as to how customers can leverage uh, the, the the variety of choice. Yeah, we're very excited about the, about this one, right? Because given what we're currently going through as uh, as uh, humanity right now across the world with the, the COVID situation and the fact that we all have now to stop looking at you know, working from home, um, you know, enabling scaling of existing infrastructure and doing it without having to go and rethink your design, right? Which is really what we're enabling with clusters and our Citrix solution is, is just paramount because what it allows you to do is if say you started and you had an existing VDI solution on premises using Citrix, extending that now and deploying new capacity in any location where you can go and spin this up in any AWS region or Azure region, now allows you to go and the same images, the same processes, the same operations of your virtual desktop infrastructure would apply regardless of where you're enabling now your workforce to work, to work remotely. Um, this is, and this is, again, it's about making this very easy and keeping that consistency of operations, you know, from managing the desktops to managing that core infrastructure. 
that is now enabled by using different clusters on Azure or AWS. Well, well, Thomas, back in a previous answer, I, I thought you were teeing something up when you said uh, we, we, we will be entering a new era. So when, when you talk about workloads uh, that, that are going to the cloud, you talk about modernization, probably the hottest area uh, that, that we have conversations with, with practitioners on is what's happening in the database world. Of course, uh, you know, there's migrations, there's lots of new databases on there, and, and Nutanix era uh, is, is helping in that piece. So uh, maybe if we could, uh, it's kind of a final workload, uh, to talk about uh, you know, how, how that's expanding uh, and what updates you have uh, for, for, for the database. Absolutely, services. absolutely. And so, I mean, ERA is, is one of our key offerings, right, when it comes to uh, database automation and really enabling teams to start delivering database as a service to their, their own um, uh, end users. Um, at, we just announced ERA 2.0, right, which is now basically taking ERA to a whole other level, allowing you to go and manage your databases across clusters. And this is very topical in this current use case because we're talking of, now I can use ERA to go manage a database that might be running on-premises for production. And using ERA to spin up clones for test dev for any team, you know, anywhere, potentially in cloud, right? And using clusters on your cloud environments. So those use cases of being able to go leverage the, the, the power of the core ACI infrastructure of Nutanix for storage management, storage efficiency, but also performance, right? And scale, doing that on-premises and in any cloud region that you may, you may want to use leverage, using ERA for all the automation and ensuring that you keep on with your best practices in terms of deploying and acting the databases is really critical. Um, so ERA 2.0, you know, great use cases here to go and just streamline how you uh, onboard databases on top of HCI, whether you're doing HCI on-premises or HCI in public cloud, and getting full automation of those operations at any scale. Yeah, I, hey, Th Thomas mentioned, uh... Performance, and error has been a great extension to the portfolio, sitting on top of our HCI. Uh, as you know, Stu, uh, databases have long been a popular workload to run on all HCI, particularly Nutanix, and it stems from scalability, performance, a lot of what I talked about earlier in terms of providing that really low latency to support the IOPS, to support the transactions per second that are needed for these very demanding databases. So we've had, um, our customers have had great success running SAP HANA, Oracle, SQL Server, um, so I think it's a combination of ERA and what we're doing that Thomas described, as well as just you know, a rock solid uh, foundational uh, you know, HCI platform to run it on. And so that's what we're very excited about to go forward in the database world. Wonderful. Well, I, I, look, I, I, we covered a lot of ground here. Uh, I, I know we probably didn't hit everything there, uh, but it, it's been you know, amazing to watch you know, Nutanix uh, really going from you know simplicity at its core and software driving it uh, to now you know that really spiders out and touches a lot of pieces. So uh, I'll give you each just kind of you know final word as to as you having conversations with your customers. You know how do how do they think of Nutanix uh, today? And you know expect we have a little bit of diversity uh, in the answers, but uh, it, it's one of those questions. I think the last couple of years you've asked uh, uh, when when people register. Uh, for dot next, uh, so it's, I'm, I'm curious to hear, uh, you know, what, what what you think on that. May, Greg, if we start with you and kind of go down the line. Yeah, for me, what sums it up is Nutanix makes IT simple. It makes IT invisible, and it allows uh, professionals to move away from the care and feeding infrastructure and really spend more time with the applications and services that power their business. And I agree with uh, Greg. I think the two things that uh, always come up, one is the freedom of choice, the ability for our customers to be able to do so many different things, have so many more choices. And we continue to do that every time we add something new or we announce something new. And then uh, just to add on to what Greg said is, uh, is to try and make the complexities invisible. So if there are multiple layers, abstract them out so that you know our customers are really focused on doing things that really matter versus trying to manage all the other underlying layers which adds more complexity. Yeah, if I could just kind of sum it all up, right, in the end, it's um, internet is becoming much more than HCI, right? Um, as hyper-converged infrastructure, this is now taking it to another level with the hybrid cloud infrastructure. And when you look at what's been built over the last few years, right, and the portfolio products that we now have, I think there's this growing recognition that Nutanix really delivers this cloud platform that you can now leverage to go and get to consistency of services, 
operations and business operations, you know, in any location, on premises, you know, through our network of service providers, through our Newtonix cloud offerings, and hyperscalers with Newtonix clusters. So, you know, I think things are really changing. The company is getting to a, a whole other level. And I can be more excited about what's coming out now the next few years as we keep on building and scaling our cloud platform. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll just add my perspective as, as, as a long time watcher of Nutanix. Uh, for, for so long, IT uh, was the organization where you typically got an answer of no, or they were very slow to be able to react on it. It was actually uh, a quote from Alan Cohen at the first uh, .next down in Miami. He said, right, we take, need to take those no's and those slows and get them to say go. So the ultimate what we need is of course, reacting to the business, taking those people, eliminating some of the things that were burdensome or took up too much time, and you're freeing them up to be able to really create value for the business. So I want to thank Greg, Madakar, Thomas. Thank you so much for helping us wrap up. Cube is always thrilled to be able to participate in .next, great community, customers really engage, and uh, great to talk with all three of you. Thank you, Thank you, Stu. All right, so that's a rack for the Cube's coverage of the Nutanix Global .next digital experience. Go to thecube.com, you can Tom, you can go see, I'm sorry, thecube.net is the website where you can go see all of the previous interviews we've done uh, with the executives, the partners, the customers. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.